everyone, it's Haley, and today I'm going to be talking about the books that I'm hoping to read in August. <laughs> Really know how my reading is going to go in August because I've been really up and down. Audiobooks have been very helpful lately because I just don't really have the mental capacity to focus on a physical read. I'm trying to work on that but it's a little bit of a work in progress just because my brain is a little bit muddled at the moment so audiobooks have been pretty helpful in terms of getting me to actually read. I find I've been gravitating towards some contemporaries however I'm hoping to read a little bit of everything this month especially I'm hoping Hoping to read a fantasy. That's like my main goal for August because I haven't read a fantasy yet this year and it's the largest portion of my TBR pile. I do really love fantasies. I'm sorry Charlie wanted to be a part of the conversation but as I was saying I haven't read a fantasy yet this year and I love fantasy and I just have so many to read that I'm slowly going to make my way towards that. So I don't have too many on this TBR pile because I want to just kind of pick up whatever I I'm in the mood for in the moment in terms of fantasy and also in terms of everything because I'm just gonna kind of read whatever I want as usual this TBR pile like isn't set in stone it's just kind of what I'm interested in as my mood changes what I read will change but I think I have a good chance of reading some of these so without further ado let's just get into it I'm going to start off with my two current reads the one book I actually just finished and that was Love Boat Taipei by Abigail Hing Wen I just finished listening to this audiobook really liked it but it was on my TBR for the month so I just wanted to still include it in this video. It's really just kind of a dramatic like summer long party. There's a lot of stuff going on in here but it also is about the main character learning to accept her identity and learning who she is as a Chinese American woman and I think that it was so good. I really liked it so I talk about it more in my reading vlog for this week that I'm filming but yeah this was on my TBR so just wanted to quickly put that in here. I also am currently reading A Summer of Salt by Katrina Leno. I'm not very far into this one at all because like I said it's my physical read and I've kind of been struggling with that. I did read some more this morning though but it's like a witchy summer story. It's kind of my progression into fantasy because it's contemporary but it has some magical elements to it so it being a very like low urban fantasy I think might help to get me there. Next this month I'm going to be trying to get to Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. We have a little group, a bunch of us have made a group out of our Animal Crossing group that we are going to be reading some classics and a different classic every month and the one that we're starting out with is Rebecca. And I'm like kind of intimidated by this one because it has real tiny font and it's pretty big but I also used to read so many classics all the time but then when I graduated from university I just kind of stopped reading them. I took a break and that ended up being a very long break so I can't even remember the last classic that I've read but it's been a long time. So this one I mistakenly thought was a ghost story but it's not really a ghost story so I don't really know what to expect from it. It has a blurb on the back from Mallory Blackman which if I'm not mistaken and I very well might be but I'm pretty sure she's the author of Knots and Crosses which is a YA book so kind of like the blurb seems very random but yeah I might be wrong about that. I will try to read this. Hopefully I'm going to get to it. I'm going to try and prioritize it but we'll see. In terms of fantasy I only have two here because like I said I'm going to kind of pick up whatever. So the first one is Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim. I had actually kind of started reading this and then gotten distracted but I was so excited for this book when I heard about it and now it's been out for a while now like the sequel is out and I obviously haven't read it yet. The concept is so cool to me though because it's all about like this magical dress competition. Like she has to make a dress out of I think it's like the moon the star I don't know it's like some weird materials and it just sounds really fun it's a dress making competition and I think it's gonna be really good at least I'm hoping and the other one is Crescent City by Sarah J Mass because I'm very behind on Sarah J Mass books and I kind of want it like I want to get caught up I've just been so hesitant with this one because I've heard it's pretty dense in the beginning so I think what I might do is listen to the first little bit on audio and then physically read it so as the world is being built up I think audio might be the way to go for me but then I would like to try and actually read it because 
Usually I go the audiobook route with fantasies because it's a little bit easier, but I want to actually read one physically. Like there's nothing wrong with audiobooks at all. I mean, I'm a huge fan of them. There's nothing wrong with listening to fantasies on audio. I just feel like I want to like push myself to physically read it. I don't know if that makes any sense. I also have a couple of historical fictions on this TBR because historical fiction has been one of my favorite things, actually probably my favorite thing to read in 2020. And I have a lot of them that I'm hoping to get to soon. So these two are definitely top priority. The first one is Blood for Blood by Ryan Groudon. Another thing I haven't been good at in 2020 is reading sequels. I've only read two and I have so many that I need to read so I want to try and improve upon that and Blood for Blood I just read Wolf by Wolf earlier this year really enjoyed it so I don't want to put this one off any longer or to the point where it's so long that I eventually just forget about it entirely which is what tends to happen but I was going to pick this one up I ended up picking up another book but I do want to try and get to it this month because it has been a fair bit since I've read Wolf by Wolf so now I think is the time. And the other historical fiction is They Went Left by Monica Hesse. I think I have included this on like pretty much all of my past TBRs for the past like six months or since it's come out. I don't think it's been six months, but it's been a little bit. And I just haven't gotten the chance to get to it yet. So it is a World War II historical fiction and it follows a girl who has recently been liberated from a concentration camp and she is trying to find her brother. So her and her brother were the only ones that were survivors in the concentration camp. The rest of their family, once they arrived there, were immediately sent toward the gas chambers and she promised her brother that they would find each other. So I think this is going to be like a really, really difficult read, but I think it will be very impactful and those are some of my favorite books to read. I would also like to try and get to Under a Painted Sky by Stacey Lee. So I realized that YA historical fiction is very, very white. So I've been trying to find some non-white YA historical fictions and this is one that I've actually had for a while and I know Stacey Lee has quite a few that I'm definitely interested in. Other than that, I can't really think of any YA ones. I know a lot of you guys were recommending recommending me some adult ones, which I definitely am also interested in, but I would like to find more YA historical fictions that aren't primarily focused on like white people and Western culture. And if you have any, please do let me know. I think I have a couple more, like I'm pretty sure, I mean, it is Western culture, but what's it called? Oh my gosh. Dreamland Burning by Jennifer Latham, but that's also by a white author. So like I would kind of want some more own voices ones, but also just generally some diverse YA historical fiction recommendations would be great. But this book is set in 1849 in Missouri and it follows Samantha who is Chinese and she is hoping to move back to New York because she wants to pursue a career in music. Music. However, this tragic accident, she ends up breaking the law in self-defense and obviously, I mean, she still broke the law. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying like that's going to be a problem. So she ends up meeting a fugitive from slavery at the scene of the crime and they end up helping each other to get out of the rut that they're in. I think this book sounds really intriguing and I have had it for quite a bit of time now. So I'm looking forward to finally reading it. Next, I have a couple of adult romances. So I haven't really read that many adult romances recently but these two are actually by the same author and that is Get a Life Chloe Brown and Take a Hint Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert. These are companion novels so I'm going to read this one first and then this one. It doesn't like really matter. You don't have to have read one in order to read the other but I just would like to so I haven't looked at the concept for Danny Brown yet because I wanted to read this one first but Chloe Brown is all about Chloe Brown who is chronically ill and and she has a near-death experience and she ends up making this basically bucket list to get herself out of her shell and make her like live her life and I've just heard so many amazing things about these two books and I've been meaning to read them over the past couple of months they have been like right at the top of my reading list but I've kind of been turning to other things saving them for the perfect time but like there is no perfect time so I just need to read them. Next is Tweet Cute by Emma Lord. I've heard some amazing things about this book. I think it's just going to be a really cute and fluffy YA contemporary. It deals with two characters who get in a Twitter feud for the restaurants, like the girl character, her parents own this big box restaurant, and then they end up stealing the boy character's grandmother's grilled cheese recipe, which is like very cherished, and it just ends up being this whole thing.
something. I think the concept sounds fun and like it could be, I don't know, just a different sort of funny read. I totally miss this next fantasy when I was talking about the fantasies that I want to read and that is A Song Below Water by Bethany C. Morrow. This is kind of a modern day take on mermaids. I guess not modern day but like it's not set in a fantastical place. It's set in Oregon and it deals with mermaids there. I think that's why I forgot about it when I was talking about fantasies, but I think this might be a good one to go with following Summer of Salt because it's kind of, once again, like a lower urban fantasy, but it's getting a bit higher than Summer of Salt. So I think I might pick this one up next, but it is all about black mermaids and there's this trial and I've heard some really great things about it. The cover is absolutely gorgeous and I think mermaid books in the summer just sounds amazing and I think this is the only mermaid book that I have on my TBR so now is the time to read it. I need to read it this month. Next is Stay Sweet by Siobhan Vivian. This is set at an ice cream stand and it's just kind of a summer romance set at an ice cream stand. I think that sounds like the perfect summer read. So adorable and like I just, I think it's gonna be fun, definitely fluffy, and the perfect pick-me-up book. Finally, for the kind of fluffier contemporaries is Maybe This Time by Casey West. I've read quite a few Casey West books, but this is one of her more recent ones that I haven't gotten the chance to get to yet. This one is set over the course of a year, and it follows a florist and a chef's son, and they end up at a lot of the same events for like weddings and stuff, and they end up falling in love over the course of a year. I think that concept, like, I'm pretty much in love with it. It just sounds adorable. Once again, super summery, and I just, I love the idea of, like, the food and the flowers and meeting at all these events, and it's just, like, this will they, won't they. I've built this one up a lot in my mind, so I hope it's as good as I'm expecting. So the final contemporaries I have on my TBR are all a little bit more intense. So first is The Start of Me and You by Emery Lord. This book has been out for a long time now. I'm not exactly sure how long, but this is the reprint cover which I love. I like it a lot more than the original cover to be honest. The concept is kind of strange. Like I guess it's not strange. It's just different. So it's about a girl who lost her boyfriend a year ago. Like not lost as in they broke up. I'm pretty sure he died but then there's also another book that this one kind of reminds me of but no I'm pretty sure he died. So she ends up taking some time off of high school and over the course of this book she's trying to rejoin high school but she also joins a quiz bowl team. And that's the premise, or at least that's what I wrote down in my notes. So I feel like the quiz bowl team is kind of going to help her like get out of the rut that she's in after losing her boyfriend. She's obviously devastated and it's going to help her to get back to her life without him. Next is I'm Not Dying With You Tonight by Kimberly Jones and Jilly Siegel. This is a very timely story. It is all about a black and a white character trying to survive the night of riots and it definitely this book has come to light more so recently and I think it's an important read and one that I'm very intrigued by. I've heard some amazing things about it and I'm super excited to get to it. Next is The How and the Why by Cynthia Hand. I've read quite a few Cynthia Hand books and I feel like more of her recent ones have been a little bit more intense and emotional and I've really been liking them. This one I talked about in my bookish wish list video because I love the idea of it. So it's about a girl who was adopted and she has the perfect life being an adopted child but she just doesn't know who her mother is and this is all about her like it's told in alternating between her trying to discover her identity and also letters from her mother to her. I think that sounds like a really interesting sort of way to tell the story and that definitely has me hooked on it and very intrigued. And the final book on this TBR is When You Were Everything by Ashley Woodfolk. I was so excited when I heard about this book because it deals with friendship breakups and I think that is such an important topic to be written about in YA books but also just in books in general because that's one of the hardest things is when you lose a friendship and sometimes it's you just drift apart, sometimes like things happen. I believe in this book they kind of just drift apart and it's told alternating between then and now and I think that that once again sounds like a really interesting format for this story and I'm really excited to read this one because I think that if it does it well it will be like a staple that I'll be recommending quite a bit. So those are all the books on my August TBR. Like I said this isn't like an official I'm for sure gonna read all of these books it's just kind of what I'm hoping to get to and what I think I might get to but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please let me know if you have read any of these books, your thoughts on them, which one I should read first. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!